Have you ever been fascinated by the idea of making your own battery? Don't hold back that passion any longer. Welcome to today's awesome video, where I'll guide you into the world of DIY battery making, simple, fun, and super creative. With just a few easy to find items, you'll be able to create your very own power source. Feeling excited yet? Grab a seat, hit play, and let's dive into this epic battery making journey. Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and share your passion in the comments. I have a thermometer that I usually use to measure temperatures, but recently I noticed that it's no longer working. No matter how many times I try to turn it on, the screen stays blank. It seems like the battery might be dead, which is probably why the device has stopped functioning. I'm thinking about opening it up to check and maybe try replacing the battery. to see if I can bring it back to life. Now I'm gonna measure the voltage of this battery to see if it still has any power left. This step will help me confirm whether the battery is really dead or if something else is causing the problem. It turns out that this battery has no voltage at all. I've just checked it and the multimeter shows a flat zero. This confirms that the battery is completely drained and definitely needs to be replaced. But as someone who enjoys bringing dead batteries back to life, I'm going to try restoring this one. This type of battery isn't designed to be rechargeable. So I'll need to boost its voltage manually. By applying control voltage for a short period, I can try to bring it back to life, at least enough to see if it can still hold a charge. I prepared a nine volt charger to give the battery a voltage boost. The charger I'm using is just two wires, one red and one black. I'll carefully press them against the positive and negative terminals of the battery to give it a quick voltage boost. It's a simple setup, but if done right, it might just bring the battery back to life. Now I'm going to check which end of the battery is the positive terminal and which one is the negative. It's important to get this right because reversing the polarity could damage the battery or the charger. I'm going to connect the black wire to the negative terminal of the battery and use some tape to hold it in place. Securing it like this will free up my hands and make the whole process much easier and safer to manage while I continue working. I'll use the red wire to gently tap against the positive terminal of the battery. I'll keep tapping little by little while carefully feeling the battery with my hand. The key is to stop when the battery starts to feel slightly warm. That's a good sign that I've given it just enough energy without overheating it.
After giving the battery a few careful taps and feeling that slight warmth, I'll stop the charging process. Now it's time to check if the voltage has improved. I'll grab the multimeter and measure the battery again to see if there's any sign of life. If the voltage has gone up even just a little, that means the battery has responded and the revival is working. I just checked the battery and the multimeter now reads 1.5 volts. It's a great result. From 0 to 1.5 volts, it's like bringing something back from the dead. Looks like this little battery still has some life left in it after all. Now I'm going to place the battery back into the thermometer and carefully close it up. Once everything is properly secured, I'll press the power button to test it. The screen lights up instantly. That's a great sign. I'll wait a few seconds to see if the thermometer starts working normally. And there it is. The display is showing temperature readings again, just like before. Looks like the battery revival was a success. Next, I'll try using the voltage boosting method to bring this clock back to life. Sometimes, when a battery seems dead, giving it a quick surge of power can help recover just enough to get the clock working again. The mechanical alarm clock is not working, its hands were frozen. The ticking sound had stopped and the alarm no longer rang. It felt lifeless, as if time inside had come to a halt. I suspected the battery was dead. I carefully replaced it with a new one. Almost immediately, the hand started moving again. The alarm was also working perfectly, just like before. After boosting the battery, I measured its voltage again. This time, the reading showed a noticeable improvement. The voltage had risen to a usable level, enough to power the clock.
was no longer flat. The battery now had life in it, ready to be tested inside the clock. I carefully placed the boosted battery back into the clock and closed the cover. Then I gave the winding knob a slight turn and waited. In just a moment, the hand started moving again, ticking steadily. The clock had come back to life, working smoothly as if nothing had happened. It seems the voltage boost was enough to revive both the battery and the clock, although the first method worked. I want to explore another way to revive dead batteries. Sometimes, boosting the voltage with a charger doesn't always work. Not every battery responds to this method. Now, I'm going to move on to the second method. A remote control that's no longer working. Just like the clock, it shows no signs of life, and the buttons don't respond at all. I suspect the batteries inside are completely dead, so I'll open it up and check. I'll measure the voltage of both batteries to figure out which one is dead. Sometimes, only one battery runs out while the other still has some power left. By checking carefully, I can save the good one and avoid wasting perfectly usable batteries. This red battery is completely dead. But in situations where you urgently need to turn on the air conditioner on a hot day, you can try a quick fix to bring the battery back to life. Even if just temporarily, I'm going to use a small hammer to boost the battery's voltage. By gently tapping the battery, I can sometimes restore a bit of internal contact or temporarily reactivate it just enough to get it working in an emergency. Revive batteries usually have a shorter lifespan. They might work well for emergencies, but often they won't last as long as new batteries. For long-term use, replacing them is still the better choice. Through these simple but effective methods, I've managed to bring dead batteries back to life and restore the devices that had stopped working. These quick methods help me bring dead batteries back to life and get my devices working again in urgent situations. Though useful, they're only temporary. For long term use, it's best to replace the battery. Thanks for watching. See you in the next project.